Hello, and welcome back to another Hogwarts Legacy video. My name is Joy, and thank you for joining us today. That is me and the comment crew. Go ahead and introduce yourself and let me know your thoughts on the upcoming Hogwarts Legacy game. This is actually the second part to my gameplay breakdown and analysis. If you've missed part one, you can go ahead and give that a watch either before or after this one. The order doesn't really matter too much, honestly. And if you're new, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future Hogwarts Legacy content from me. All right, that's enough babbling and intros. Let's get into the video because this one is juicy. Talents and abilities. I can't lie, when I first saw those cards come up on the screen, I had a little bit of a horror moment. I really am not a fan of card systems, but it seems like these Tarot-like cards are only showing your character's status. I wholly approve, and I think the card design is actually really neat as well. Let's take a moment to look at what we've got up top here. Character, inventory, talents, collections, challenges, map, owl posts, quests, and settings. Talents seem to be a subsection of your status, whereas character would have your main level and maybe indication of what you look like at the present moment. Inventory is obvious, but collections though? If I had to guess, I'm thinking we'll be given items to look for to unlock treasures, talent points, rewards, once we've completed a collection. Remember, this is just me speculating and a lot of what I'm saying isn't actually confirmed. I'd love to hear what you think though. Level up your abilities by choosing talents to upgrade your spells. Ooh, we can see ourselves becoming invisible. We know that this is very rare magic to be able to become invisible as Harry Potter himself only uses a cloak, but we know that Dumbledore does possess the ability to become invisible without one. I noticed that we're doing a bit of a challenge where we use our skills to get through an area, but one of the options seems to be to loot? Are we able to steal from our fellow students? The urge to be evil in the game is so big. <laughs> you can loot, buy, or craft your own magical gear, which answers what it is we could be looting from enemies or students. The creature on the wall here reminds me very much of a Kelpie. I'm going to assume we are outside of Hogwarts grounds and looting a restaurant or something of some kind. As I mentioned before during the Herbology section in part one, We'll be able to pick up items and plants to gather ingredients for various tasks and magic. This is quickly followed by tailoring. Is this perhaps Madame Malkins in Diagon Alley? It seems we are able to add magical attributes to our clothing, which may seem obvious, but wasn't something I considered as in the Harry Potter series, it seems few articles of clothing are normally charmed or enchanted. Did you spot Hermione's Yule ball gown here? Use a strong, even motion when cutting your ingredients. We'll have to do our fair share of work when it comes to creating potions. How are you feeling about this? Myself, I'm usually awful when it comes to timed or rhythmic motions using a controller. This is something used often with cooking in RPGs, so I shouldn't be so surprised to see it here. It's things like this where you can see items that are charmed to do work on their own, which is so common in the Potter series. I love seeing it at work here too. In the back, you can see the Death Eater chamber. Oh, this. This is in my head somewhere. I have to look at the lore real quick. I want to know, where are we? There seems to be quite a lot of darker looking items hiding in the back. They say we can brew these potions for use outside of class to increase our powers when we need a boost. And we can see our character gaining strength here, or resilience, by turning into stone momentarily. This game seems like it's got so much in it waiting for us. Can I just come out already? You're able to grow plants and place them on the battlefield to help you in combat. And again, something else I didn't anticipate. I keep feeling like I've seen it all when it comes to RPGs, but I think Hogwarts Legacy is going to be full of surprises. And I'm sure they're keeping some of the best bits hidden away. Even the use of mandrakes is hilarious. You've quite literally got a plant pot with you that you're using to incapacitate your enemies. Might be useful when having a visit with your least favorite teacher as well. And of course, there is a beasts class. The cutest little niffler on my screen right now. <laughs> I know that people make realistic replicas of these adorable things and I, I need one. I need one. The little baby pushing the ball across the sand is melting my heart almost as much as this big cutie having its belly brushed. It looks like taming beasts is just as big a part of the game as many of us wanted it to be. All right, next is broomstick flying. A hugely anticipated portion of the game is of course Quidditch. Our character is seen flying through what I imagine is a flying course. And I wonder if these red balloons we saw earlier and here are objects we're meant to hit throughout the course to maybe gain points and pass the challenge or maybe just to be used as a sort of boundary line. Oh, 
I bet flying challenges will be available outside of school for more experience points. Flying broomsticks is clearly meant to be used as a fast travel option as well, but we also know that hippogriffs are available for flight. All right, companions. How do you guys feel about the companions? I'm still not so sure, but let's get into it. First off, the green flame strikes again, twice, three times. It must be something to walk up to read, like a sign, but I had quite a few comments on my previous video mentioned that they believe this to be flu powder. I really like that theory. Obviously, green flame, we really only know it goes along with one thing in the Potter universe. We are told that there are abilities that will be taught to us by other students who become our friends, and we are also shown characters beyond the first two shown at the start of the gameplay. Natso Nai and Poppy Sweeting are our friends we are introduced to here. One is fighting for justice, and the other seems to be seriously interested in Fantastic Beasts. Both seem to carry purposeful roles in our character's story, and I'm really looking forward to getting to know what they will teach us. We're given their names and a tiny bit of background, and I believe Sebastian will be the most interesting, given that we learn about his Slytherin family secret. Plus, I love a bad boy, so of course he'll be my favorite. Is that Peeves? Everyone's favorite poltergeist is here, getting the well-deserved attention that he didn't get during the Potter films. Look at the decor in here. I am a sucker for castles. I visited one in the time it was taking me to create this video. There's a touch more on the Slytherin common room, and I think this may be the common room we've seen the most so far in this gameplay trailer. The instruments are, of course, playing themselves, and it wouldn't be Slytherin if they didn't have extravagant pieces furnishing their common room. We can see our characters strutting down the steps on the moving staircase. I've loved pausing and taking a look at the supposedly infamous magic folk on the walls. We had seen a glimpse of the enchanted stairs in the original trailer, and I'm excited to see us actually using them. All right, next up is the Room of Requirement. I need to take a moment and say that I absolutely adore the Room of Requirement. I think the concept is so cool. A room that appears to anyone who requires it and gives them the tools they need to accomplish their goal or fulfill their needs. As many things in the Potter universe, the Room of Requirement isn't extremely clear on exactly what the boundaries of the magical rules are, but it's so visually interesting that I think many of us don't mind at all. Here we can see ourselves with an older witch and a house elf. The room seems to be changing or rearranging itself, and the next look has us seeing what looks like an indoor garden of sorts. Maybe we've needed herbology related things. Oh, quick! Look over here, a Niffler statue, but uh, what is that? Okay, maybe this isn't herbology related. As we look over the balcony edge, we can see all sorts of things filling the corners of this magical space. An owl, floating candles, books, tea, plants, and above all of this, we can see what looks like a few different doors. I wonder what places this will lead us. Maybe the room of requirement serves as a fast travel space? They say the space senses what you need and provides it for you. I'm guessing it syncs up with your inventory, or maybe it just always carries a similar array of items that perhaps change as your main story progresses. The Hopping Pot makes a little cameo here, and it reminds me very much of the one from The Beetle the Bard, uh, the story of the Hopping Pot. It says the room gives you space to sow your plants, brew potions, and upgrade your gear. Judging by the upstairs space, though, I would have to guess that there's more than just this room and these things in here. We walk through a more familiar version of the room and we're told that the house elf is called Deke. He opens up the menagerie of magical beasts for you. The interior of this magical space is really neat and we're allowed to customize it to however we like. I think adding something like this to the game was brilliant. It takes us beyond a Hogwarts life and lets us live even just a little bit of what maybe day-to-day -day life might feel like in the wizarding world. What with cottages, a garden, and magical pets. Garfield? Beyond the castle walls, we are seen flying on the back of a hippogriff, just, you know, casually passing a dragon. We are taken into Hogsmeade after a quick glimpse at Hogsmeade Station, where the Hogwarts Express takes students to and from the school. I'm seeing a bookstore, a potion shop, they mention magical seeds, and clothing slash gear. Hogsmeade looks like it will be a lot of fun to visit. Next, our top-hatted man is back. Is that a cat? and another glimpse into gameplay of a fight. This looks like it might be a part of the fight we saw earlier in part one of the gameplay, but nonetheless, I'm still happy to be seeing it. They say that as the year progresses, you'll find that Hogwarts and the world around it changes. This game is just going to be absolutely brimming with fun and new things. And I mean it when I say that we'll be able to get a lot of playtime out of Hogwarts Legacy. We can see the seasons and weather changing and ourselves flying over small cottages, walking past village vendors, 
these rune-like symbols keep reappearing, so I'm, I'm guessing it's a magical language. I wonder what the stall is carrying. We can see a unicorn sign just out in front, but horns in a barrel? Is this illegal magical items? I doubt it, just judging by the uh, environment, but still, maybe that's a thing. Whoa, look at this art. Cool, I love it. They say people will have missions for you to use your magical skills with. There's so many mini game type of things in here. There are supposedly Merlin designed magical puzzles. I'm definitely gonna need the help of a Ravenclaw for these portions, of course. The mysterious dark magic that was mentioned in part one comes up again, and we can see these huge toad-like creatures just waddling about this flooded space. I'm guessing this is the dark magic that was cursing the goblins as well. Very much like sweet Newt Scamander, use your magical bag to rescue animals such as these moon calves to keep them safe from poachers. Okay, okay. Thestrals! If you need to know something about me, Thestrals are my absolute favorite creatures of the wizarding world, said to only be seen by those who have witnessed death, but invisible to all else. These animals are first introduced in the Potter books as magical carriages that are pushing themselves towards the castle. We later find out that they've been Thestral led all along. A quick glimpse into what seems very much like underneath Gringotts Bank, perhaps visiting our own or a special vault? They say dungeons and vaults hold enemies and rewards, so I will assume that this here is one of the vaults. Ugh, creepy. In the epic finale, we are told to be cautious of where we wander, as there are darker things hidden throughout the world, but we may have been able to guess that for ourselves. Master Spells, Befriend New Allies, Journey Across a Landscape Never Seen Before, Uncover Ancient Secrets, Combat Mystical Threats, Learn Long Forgotten Mysteries, Become the witch or wizard you want to be, and leave your unique mark on the wizarding world. They leave us off with the famous Hedwig theme that we all know from the Potter films, and a promise for a holiday release this year. Phew! That was so much to process, and we are only just skimming the surface. I am beyond excited to play this game and learn more about it. I'm particularly interested in the art book that's meant to come out in autumn of this year. Let me know any thoughts, questions, theories, or anything of the like related to Hogwarts Legacy or the Wizarding World. Thanks for sticking around to the end, and I hope to catch you in the next video. I will absolutely continue making videos on the subject, so keep notifications on and you won't miss a single one. See you soon. Bye!